You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 16. And if your teen is using past papers to help them ever prep for or revise for exams, then listen in because I'm sharing some other ways your teen can make more strategic use of those exam board past papers or practice questions than just doing the questions. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hello, VIPs. How are you doing? I hope you're ready to talk exam prep today. You know that exams are one of my favorite topics. And today I'm particularly fired up because I'm actually going to be sharing with you some of the content that I've delivered in Next Level Coaching this month. So Next Level is my monthly coaching program for 10WGT grads. And every month we have a different monthly challenge. Now, this is not some sort of extra homework challenge or tasks that have to be completed and submitted. This is the way that I like to keep a fresh approach to things and a fresh focus each month and how we keep moving students forwards and upwards. Sometimes it might be a workshop or it's a quiz or even like back in June, we did a whole four week essays boot camp. So these challenges accompany all of the personal coaching that we do on the live group calls and they build upon everything students have covered in the 10WGT. And this month I delivered our challenge as a decide and action seminar. (laughs) So not just a seminar, a decide and then action seminar where each student has to decide with my input and feedback on their personal situation, which of the better ways that I shared to use past papers is indeed the best for them and their subjects. Now, of course, I can't work through the personalized and action elements here on the podcast, but I can share with you what some of those better ways to use past papers are in the hopes that you gain a little bit more insight into this whole world of past papers and maybe even pass one or two tips onto your teen so that they can start to see some of these benefits in their exam prep as well. Because the traditional ways that most students are using past papers are this. So first of all, it might just be looking through them, getting a feel for the layout, how all of the external exams look and feel. And this is perfectly good. It's definitely an important thing to do to be across and feel familiar with how everything is formatted. Taking things a little bit further, they might be doing a bit of a survey of what topics are covered to help inform their revision, both in terms of where they show up in the paper, like are certain topics tending to be in the short response questions near the start or the extended response questions at the end, and also where and when they have cropped up over the years. This is something I do have students do as part of the prioritizing stage in my reverse engineered revision planning system. And then there's probably the most common method doing the past papers to complete the questions, answer them in full, either to test themselves on whether they really know the subject content. And they also might be choosing to do it under those same time restrictions of the paper. So they get used to the time limits and the pressure that that brings. So nothing wrong with any of those methods, all valid, all useful. But like most things in life, there are pros and cons to each of these methods. So, for example, if we are using the past papers to survey the topics being tested to help decide what we're going to revise, that can be helpful to inform that revision, but it doesn't develop uh, actual exam technique. Or if we are doing the past paper, we're completing the questions under time conditions, that can be great for getting us used to the exam conditions, but it is a time consuming activity. We can't always be spending a whole two or more hours completing just one past paper when we likely have probably at least two or three papers across multiple subjects that we maybe want to go through. 
But if students have a wider variety of different ways and methods to use those past papers, then they can select the methods that have the specific pros out of all the pros and cons that will be of most benefit to them personally. So here are a few other ways that your team can use past papers that will maximize the benefits and translate into more confidence walking into the exam and better results at the end of it. So the first one is to use past papers as a way to practice identifying command words. Now, command words are the words in the question that tell your teen exactly what to do and how to answer. So they need to identify the verb in the question and deduce the level of cognition. Now, if your teen could use some training in that skill of identifying and understanding command words before they can get into practicing it, then I have two whole modules in the 10WGT, the 10 Week Grade Transformation Program where I train your teen in this critical element of exam technique. This is one of six elements of exam technique, identifying and understanding command words. And we especially go into detail then on the higher level commands like analyze and evaluate, because once they know how to identify command words and the different levels of cognition, including the questions that don't have a specific verb. So they might not always be able to find a specific verb in every question, like with questions that start with how. Because once they do have those skills, they can then use past papers as a way of practicing and honing them. Now, they won't be testing themselves on their subject content here. This is all about the application aspect, developing one of those elements of their exam technique, identifying the command in the question. So if answering exactly what the question is asking, i.e. getting on the right track from the start, going into the right amount of detail, but also not giving more information beyond what's being asked for, then this could be a great strategy for your team. Okay, another way they can use past papers is to play one of my favorite games. (laughs) Predict the mark scheme. (laughs) It's not actually a real game. It's not as fun as Twister. It's probably more fun than I Spy though, granted. And this is where, instead of answering the questions, your teen dissects the question and looks at the number of marks allocated and from those, writes out a mark scheme of what would be required for full marks. So here's why this is actually one of my favorite exam games. Let's call it an exam game. Who knew that exams could be turned into games, huh? It's because it does require some subject knowledge and it also requires students to think about what the question is really requiring and what it isn't requiring. So what might students be tempted to include that isn't actually needed? And they do all of this from the perspective of the marker. They start to get inside the mind of the marker and think about what they're going to be looking for, not what they think they need to write as the student, what the marker is going to be looking for. As you can imagine, when we divided the class into students and examiners, all the students would put their hand up to be the examiners. They all wanted to write the mark scheme instead of answer the question, even though it basically requires the same skills. So it's kind of a nice, sneaky, but refreshing switch up for them as well. All right, next way to use past papers, other than just answering the questions, is related specifically to those big extended response and essay questions. These are the ones that hold the most marks, yet, totally understandably, are also the ones that students dread the most and practice the least. Number one, because they are tough. These are the questions that are pitched at the top levels of cognition, usually at the analysis or evaluation levels. So they do take more effort, thought and skill to answer. And two, because they take a long time to answer. So they feel overwhelming and daunting. And so there's the natural tendency to think, well... I could get through eight of the other questions in, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, but I could only get through one of those. So I'll do the eight because it feels more productive. And by the way, I see students doing this a lot in maths practice as well. They would rather complete, I don't know, 10 
practice or revision questions that are smaller when they would have probably be been better off strategically spending their time on doing just one or two of the big wordy questions. And they would have gotten more out of that in terms of the processing and the learning and the revision that that would give them. Now, again, I totally get it. It is very tempting to chase the feeling of accomplishment that we get by doing more questions. Of course it is. But remember, the daunting questions are the ones with the most marks. And so these are the questions that I want your teen to be practicing, to be mastering and to get super confident in. So here's how to make that a reality in a less daunting and less time consuming way. Rather than writing out the whole essay or full page response or whatever it is, instead have your teen write out a bullet point plan. Now, it still has to be detailed. It can't just be three basic things that they would write in three body paragraphs. <laughs> here's what I recommend they actually include. For an essay, it would be the thesis statement, their three or four body paragraph points and the exact evidence they would use in those body paragraphs. So it would probably all up be, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 bullet points. This means that they'll get the practice of dissecting the question, quickly coming up with a plan in response. And I will say this is extra important because I always want your teen to plan every extended response and essay that they write. They should never just start writing and be figuring it out as they go. So it's a really good drill for that as well. And as you can imagine, they can probably get through four or five question dissections and plans in the time it would take them to write a full essay. So they're going to get a wider range of practice. But again, consider what your teen needs most. If they need practice in actually writing a flowing and well-written full response under time pressure, then go for it. Have them do a full response to practice with. But if it's breaking down the question, coming up with what to write and how to structure it and what evidence to include and planning that all out before they write, not just winging it, then this is a super effective way to do it. Okay. The last one I'm going to share with you is a little bit more involved, but if your teen tries any of those others and gets on well, then this could be a great way to have them take things a little bit further. This is taken from one of the activities that I love to run with students. It's the most marks, least words challenge. And for this, your teen will also need the mark scheme for the past paper that they're using. And they use the question along with the marking criteria to construct a model response. So an answer that would get full marks and they've looked at the mark scheme. So they, it's not like they're testing themselves. They know what it needs to include, but they also do it in the most succinct way. So this really makes students think about what's required at what level and what isn't. And it helps them revise because they can kind of do this open book. It's more about getting them writing with more clarity and more directly in exams, which is often not what they're used to doing in class or homework or in their research or assignments. So this is an excellent activity for students who run out of time in exams. In fact, I want to share with you one of my favorite ever emails that I got from a parent, Selena. Her son, Campbell, completed the 10WGT, I think at the start of his year 12, and then he joined Next Level Coaching for the rest of his year 12. So this email is now about nine or 10 months old now, but it still ranks as one of my favorites ever. And Selena did give me permission back then to share this. And the whole thing is actually just so good that I'm going to read it all. It's not long, but I'm gonna tell you the part that does make it one of my favorites when I get to that part. So Selena said, Campbell received some great news today. He has been given early entry into engineering at UTS, and this was his preferred university and course, so he is super excited. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for this program. It has helped Campbell fine tune his written skills, allowing him to improve his marks and become more confident when sitting exams and assignments. If only he'd had this information earlier. By the way, that's one of the most common comments I get from parents is, I wish we'd had this information earlier. But here's the part I love the most, even more than that early uni entry and even more than the confidence part. She said, last week, he was completing a short answer response in a last minute online group tutoring lesson. His peers 
all wrote around four to six sentences to complete the task. Here it comes. Campbell wrote two sentences and received the best mark. She said, this is thanks to you. Again, thank you. Kind regards, Selena. Two sentences, best mark. More criteria met in two sentences than other students met in four to six sentences. I love this. This really is like the art and science of mastering and nailing exams. <laughs> so this way of using past papers along with the mark scheme and creating a model succinct response will help your teen to do this as well. Okay, so those are four that I selected out of some alternative and better ways for your teen to use past papers when they are preparing for exams, either in revising or in testing themselves on their subject knowledge, or maybe in practicing and honing their exam technique. And many of these methods mean that your teen could cover a whole paper, likely multiple papers, much faster than if they were actually trying to answer all of the questions, but getting the benefits beyond just testing their knowledge. Not that doing past papers and answering the questions isn't a good way to use them. It just depends on what your teen wants to practice or test themselves on. Is it their subject knowledge or is it any of the elements of exam technique? Sometimes, remember, it is not necessarily their subject knowledge that is holding them back. Plus that these are generally much shorter or quicker ways for your teen to do their exam prep or practice their past papers might also make it a little bit more appealing to them. So a potential little bonus there. So I would love to know which of these do you think would or could be most helpful for your teen? Or if they do end up trying one or two of them, let me know how they find it. Tell me how they go. I would love to get your feedback. Email support at rocksolidstudy.com and tell me. And if you know of any other parents or carers who could use these tips for their teen or would be interested in what I share here on the podcast, then please forward them a screenshot or post a screenshot of your favorite episode on any of your social media. Because I've got to tell you, I am absolutely loving making each of these episodes for you. And I've got so many awesome topics and episodes in store for you coming up. So make sure you have clicked follow or subscribe in your podcast app, wherever you are listening to this. And I will see you back here for another episode of the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast next week. Have a brilliant week and bye for now. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you head on over to www.rocksolidstudy.com and sign up for my free parent guide. The three huge mistakes even smart students make in exams and assignments and how to fix them immediately. And I'll see you back here next week. Bye.